Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aditya Singh and in today's video, we'll dive into lane detection using OpenCV in Python. This video is part two of our lane detection tutorial. That means we already have a starting point and a clear goal for this session. If you're just joining us, don't worry. I'll walk you through the prerequisites so you can easily catch up and follow along. Let's quickly review what we have done so far and where we are headed before jumping into the implementation. So let's get started. So first off, let's have a look at the result. So this is what success looks like to us. We have our focus on the lanes and we have green highlighted area detecting the lens on the road as the car moves and the camera is mounted on the dashboard of the car. And so this is the endpoint that we wish or aim to achieve by the end of the session. Now let's have a look at the starting point from where we are beginning. So we begin by reading the image with OpenCV on Python and we draw four coordinates of a trapezoid that focuses on the lane so that we can use those coordinates to perform perspective transformation. And so then we use those four coordinates to perform perspective transformation and obtain the bird's eye view perspective of the road. Right now, the lane now appears to us as if we are flying above the road and looking perpendicularly downwards, which will enable us to do more accurate image processing rather than looking from front dashboard to the road. Then we performed image thresholding on the perspective transformed image of the lanes and image thresholding is nothing but intensity transformation in terms of image processing and basically we converted RGB color channel to HSV color channel and did accurately track down the thresholding such that we are able to only pick the lane pixels. And then we applied the sliding window approach on our code to detect the lanes accurately. Now for all of this, I have a video on YouTube with good reputation that you can use to get the prerequisites right, but it's completely up to your choice and the link will be in the description. And now let's code the implementation. While we are starting, we already have the sliding windows implemented on our code and we are moving forward uh, towards getting the perspective back into original image and then the lanes that were detected using sliding window, we want to detect it on the original perspective and highlight the area between the lanes with a green path. So that is what we are aiming to do and let's do it. Now let's break down the entire process into components so that we are able to think it through before we begin. So there are three components essentially. First is that we collect lane coordinates. Second is that we use that to draw a polygon filling the lane. And third is to inverse the perspective to the original image back from the bird's eye view that we have on which we are performing the sliding windows. So for collecting lane coordinates, we will ensure that left lane and right lane coordinates have same lengths as in Alex and RX are the arrays which have the left lane, Alex has the left lane coordinates, Rx has the right lane coordinates. That's coming from sliding windows and we want to make sure that they are of equal length. Then we want to create top and bottom points of the quadrilateral from those coordinates. And then we want to define the coordinate points and reshape quad, uh, quad points to resize shape for po fill poly. This will come under collect lane coordinates. Then we want to draw the polygon filling lane that will be creating a copy of transformed frame. Draw the filled polygon on that transformed frame copy and then display it to verify if everything is working fine. That is step two. And then finally, we want to inverse the perspective and we do that uh, in the final two steps where we inverse the perspective using CV2 library and understand how it works. And then we combine it with the original image and get the output. So first off, we'll write code to make sure that neither Alex nor Rx are empty, as in when they are, how do we handle that scenario? Well, visually, it will never happen. Every time it will look like left lens are working, uh, sliding windows are detecting left lens and right lens, but there will be frames for a brief where these sliding windows are failing for some reason and Alex uh, is basically empty and it's not picking anything. Or 
either it's the case with rx for those scenario what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, in those uncertainty instead of our code logic breaking because it doesn't expect empty further as will will code will have strong dependency on these alex and rx coordinates so to ensure that our code doesn't break we want to have some value and when it fails to pick one we want to pick the latest previous alex value as in just a frame before which this frame where we are not getting the value pick just the values that were before this frame so this logic will take care of that and this brief alex and brief rx are defined outside while loop so they are more like global as in uh, while frames we are iterating over frames they will uh, be accessible and not get reset every time and as we are iterating over the frames these will be updated with the most recent and stable non empty value so let's take a quick moment to ensure that we are on the same page right now i am on my github repo by the way for which the link is in the description below and you can check that out as well so code wise what we are doing is first of all we are defining track bus through which we uh, are able to visually and in real time threshold the values we are reading frames and while we are successfully reading the frames we are entering a loop where we are reading frame by frame values and we are performing image processing on top of it first of all we are uh, marking the four quadrilateral points that we want to perform the perspective transformation on then we are performing the transformation then we are doing object detection that is we are using track bus now to threshold the image and then we are using histogram to actually implement the sliding window this is the entire code and when we are doing sliding window we are again in entering into another while loop where we are sliding the windows from bottom to up in y axis on y axis and uh, right now just when we are getting out of the y axis loop or the loop for iterating over the sliding windows is the place where we are currently coding on so that was the quick review of code wise where we stand and now we have alex and rx from that while loop for y coordinates where we obtained coordinates for left lanes and right lanes while iterating over y coordinates and identifying the lanes using sliding windows so we have already actually collected the lane coordinates and those are stored in alex and rx then we ensure that they are not corrupted but uh, the most recent and stable values and then we use them to find the four coordinates of the of a quadrilateral that we are forming with top left bottom left bottom right and top right and then we are now going to use them to draw the quadrilateral on the transformed image that we have so let's do that so now we are drawing the polygon in order to fill the lanes to visually detect what computer is detecting behind the scenes programmatically so um, what we have done is we are drawing polygon using cv2.fill poly and we are drawing out it on result variable which is nothing but a copy of transformed frame that we have of the bird's eye view and then we are using quad points which are basically the four quadrilateral points and we are giving the color channel in form of bgr and keeping giving g as max that is 255 so we are essentially drawing a green colored polygon that is quadrilateral of four coordinates on the copy of transform frame that is stored in result variable right now so now as we move ahead a couple of changes from the past we have changed the variable from result to overlay as uh, we will use the result variable for the final result and now we are storing the image on which we are drawing the opaque quadrilateral green colored on overlay and then we are uh, setting the alpha variable as the opacity factor that is 0.2 so a one minus alpha is what we are passing as the argument that is we are pass setting the opacity of the image on which we have drawn the polygon opaque polygon uh, as 0 0.2 and we are overlapping it on top of the original transformed frame and we are doing this using add weighted from cv2 library 
So let's have a look at the output. First, we'll look at the overlay. How does it look like? And then we can also have a look at what is doing to the transform image because cv 2add weighted is going to overwrite the transformed frame uh, with the overlay uh, being added on top of it with an opacity factor of 0 0.2. So if I run the program, uh, these are the sliding windows. This is the transformed frame bird's eye view, which has the polygon with opacity factor of 0 0.2 on top of it. But then we also have the transformed frame copy on which we basically the overlay variable on which we drew the polygon op with opacity 100. And that is this. And now we are at the final phase where we want to inverse the perspective to original image for which we will need a transformation matrix which we will use to transform the image back to its original perspective. So now we need two things. We need the inverse matrix which we will use to do matrix multiplication to get the original image. So to get the inverse matrix we will make use of get perspective transform from cv2 and we'll feed the inputs as this time points 2 as first argument and point 1 as second argument because now we want to get the transformation from uh, points 2 to points 1 by the way points 1 are the trapezoid points that we marked on the original image and points 2 are the transformed coordinates that we selected to for it to be uh, transformed into and that we did in the first video and now we are going to use warp perspective from uh, CV2 in order to transform the image from bird's eye view perspective back to original perspective just like we did uh, when we wanted to convert the original image to bird's eye view perspective the only difference is that for that time we were using metrics uh, that was obtained from points 1 to points 2 this time we are using inverse metrics which is obtained by points 2 to points 1 conversion and rest is same so now we have original perspective lane image but the only difference is that now when we are transforming back we are when we are inverting the perspective we are not inverting it as it is to the original image we first in uh, transform the image to bird's eye view then we detected the lanes we visually marked them and then now we are uh, inverting it or inversing the perspective back to original perspective with those lanes being visually marked thus the original image will also contain the marked lanes in the right original perspective as well so we are almost at the finish line uh, let's see this through so um, i'm going to do cv2.im show original perspective lane image so that we can actually see what's inside that frame so let's do that i'm going to run this program and this is what the final result right now looks like uh, and this is happening because when we did the perspective transformation from original to bird's eye view we marked the trapezoid and we lost all the pixel values that were outside trapezoid and now that we are inversing the perspective we are not actually retrieving those lost pixel values how do we retrieve those that's not a big of a challenge because we are going to do a trick we are going to use cv2.add weighted to actually superimpose this perspective transformed image on the original frame so uh, what will happen is original image will stay as it is and this only area will superimpose on top of it and we will set the opacity factor as 0 0.5 and that should do the trick and yes it does and that's a wrap thank you for watching this video i hope you had a good time you enjoyed it and found it interesting and insightful and if you did do drop a thumbs up that lets me know that you had a good time and do subscribe this channel for more such content in the future and that is it happy coding